today we're going to talk about the Maxwell model. So here you can kind of see our Maxwell model where we have our basically our spring and our dash pot uh, in series, whereas in our Voigt model we have our spring and our dash pot S D, our spring and dash pot in parallel. So these are going to kind of model uh, two very different uh, kind of behaviors. The spring is going to be kind of again our elastic response. And that dash pot contains basically a Newtonian fluid that's going to be our viscous or our fluid response. So this kind of model encapsulates the viscoelastic behavior of polymeric materials. So when we talk about and we can describe what's the stress and strain in the spring, we're going to use our hooking law. Uh, for the dash pot, we're going to see that the uh, our stress in the dash pot is going to be stress. Dash pot is just going to be our viscosity times the strain of the dash pot times the strain rate of that dash pot. That's it. So you can see that a little bit nicer uh, over here. So now let's go back actually um, to, actually let's go back to our model here for our Maxwell model. So in this Maxwell model, I'm gonna kind of draw, let's see if we can kind of go way over here. If we're in series, uh, what can we say about the stresses in the strains? Are the strains gonna be equal? So as I pull on, uh, Say I pull here. I pull this material. Is the strain in my spring going to be the same as the strain in the uh, dash part? Are they going to be equal? No, they're in series, right? So they're not. You know, it's different if we're in parallel, where again we're kind of constraining, and the strains have to be equal. So actually, the strain in my Maxwell model is going to be the sum of the strain in my spring plus the uh, strain in my dash pot. We could also say that the strain rate of my Maxwell is going to be strain rate of spring plus the strain rate of my dash pot. Uh, I do know, however, if, again, if I'm pulling on this material like this, the cross-sectional area here is going to be uh, exactly the same. So the stress that's uh, felt, because we're in series, the stress in my maximal model is equal to my stress in my spring, equal to the stress in my dash pot right there. So we can use this expression, and now I'm going to plug in. So I could use our extra plug in expression right here. So the strain rate of my Maxwell uh, model is going to be the stress of my Maxwell. I'm just plugging in basically strain rate of my spring is going to be equal to the strain rate of my spring or stress, excuse me, strain rate of my uh, spring is going to be the stress, uh, stress rate of my spring over my Young's modulus. And we already know that for the dash pot, it's equal to Again, the stress of your dash pot uh, over your viscosity here. So the key idea here is because actually the screen right here, yeah, exactly right here. The key idea here is because my stresses are equal, I can rewrite this expression as simply this. Uh, let me get rid of this. Oops, excuse me. I can now go through here over E plus my stress of my Maxwell over my viscosity. So this is my expression for the strain rate of my Maxwell model, uh, uh, for, actually, for, yeah, strain rate from my Maxwell model. Now, typically when you're measuring, uh, you know, with these types of systems, uh, we can, actually let's go back and summarize this now here. So remember, when we're in series in our Maxwell model, stresses will be the same for string and dash pot, the strains will be different, and yeah, they're gonna give us this sum. So we're gonna work with this expression. Now, with this system, we typically do two types of experiments with polymers. One is a stress relaxation experiment, uh, basically where we, again, stress relaxation, we apply a constant strain and creep, a creep experiment where we apply a constant stress. So if we're dealing a stress relaxation, if we're applying a constant strain, we know that the strain rate, basically, you know, how it changes with the time is going to be zero here. And if we want to now get a relationship between, you know, if we're doing... If we do a stress relaxation, we apply constant strain, E naught, and we want to see how the stress evolves as a function of time. That's kind of our goal in this experiment. Now, if I do a creep test, i.e. apply a constant stress, then I want to see how strain evolves as a function of time. When we do this, and we get these, uh, uh, you know, now, again, we have here our strain rate as a function of time. We can then integrate this and, again, and now we get uh, here our expression uh, for, and actually there's a typo here, tau, our relaxation time can be approximated as this inverse 
uh, here it is actually e over eta. Why? Because my e is in units of pascals. This my viscosity is pascal seconds, so I need to make sure that that's on the top. So just a quick there, uh, right here. So for our stress relaxation, we get this expression for how stress will behave as a function of time. So you can see here, this is actually a pretty good model for how polymers will behave because at very, very, very short times, they're going to behave elastically. And one of the kind of um, actually quick tr uh, a trick you could uh, look at for or simplify your model and how it should behave at very, very long times. So when t is very, very, very long, the dash pots are going to basically behave unconnected. So you can kind of approximate them as like there's a gap there. They're missing. Again, because they're just kind of, you're pulling so slow that they're just flowing. But at very, very short times, when t is very, very, very small, they're going to behave basically almost as like rigid links. So they're just going to appear not as a dash bot, but just as, you know, at very, very short times, the Maxwell model should just look like this, which is this here. So there'd be no dash bot. It's just a, a rigid link there. So if that's the case, we should see in this Maxwell model that at short times, so I just have my stress that I'm applying, sigma naught, to my, you know, uh, basically to my material. And then over time, that stress kind of decays and relaxes. So initial stress that, again, applying because of a constant strain. So that constant strain component, which, uh, you know, corresponds to that uh, constant, uh, or basically the stress here, that sigma naught, that corresponds to this uh, constant strain. And then over time, it decays. We can do the exact same thing for creep as well. So we have our expression the uh, strain rate of our Maxwell model, uh, but now we're doing a constant stress, so stress equals sigma naught. So this uh, this uh, basic component here uh, goes away because there's no change in stress as a function of time, and we're just left with this expression right here. So when we do that, you can again integrate and get this, our strain, as a function of time. Now here, there's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit interesting, a little bit different. So if we try to plot this expression at time t equals zero, what's our aggregate strain? Well, it's just this, you know, the initial strain that we put on our system. And as we, you know, again, what is we're looking for actually like this it's just essentially this is your that corresponds to uh, the constant strain stress, excuse me. Here. So we have this initial value of strain, and then as a function of time it is actually going to grow linearly. So this is not a realistic kind of expectation or a realistic kind of discussion or realistic um, approximation of viscoelastic behavior. So that strain should not really uh, kind of increase into infinity if you apply a constant stress. So this is not really a good uh, model for, uh, that mental model doesn't approximate polymers very well in terms of their creep behavior. So in order to do that, we need to look at a different model uh, to, in order to capture kind of creep uh, better. And we're going to look at Kelvin Voigt. Uh, so we are going to get into that in the next video. So I'll see you all in the next one. I hope that helps. Uh, all right. Bye. Video, just a little extra uh, tidbit of information. So most polymers uh, will actually kind of behave like this in terms of your uh, strain uh, behavior. So they should actually go like this, and they'll increase. But again, they won't increase linearly. Uh, you'll see kind of this uh, basically kind of not logarithmic, but this kind of growth, right? This kind of behavior like this. So this kind of inverse, not inverse or exponential, but uh, we might see that pop up on the next model. So this is how polymers typically behave. So for the Maxwell model, it does not predict uh, essentially uh, creep behavior well. So that's how real polymers should behave. Uh, so Maxwell, it nails our stress relaxation behavior. That stress should decay but uh, it does not capture this behavior. So we have to look at and uh, use a different model next time.